Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing the latest version of Jellyfin's media server. Now, there is a lot of different versions of Jellyfin available. We're going to be doing it on a Windows because we're on a Windows 10 PC. You can install this on many versions of Windows. You can even run this in a Docker container. There's a wide variety of ways to install this. I'll make sure I link everything in the description below. We're going to go ahead and install this Windows version. To begin, we're going to click on the Download Now button, and we're in the Download section. There's an option over here to download clients. This is what you're going to install on your device that you're going to be watching the videos. If you're going to be watching it on, say, Google TV, there is an Android version that you can get right in the Play Store. Or if you're going to be running it on a desktop, there is a media player there. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be downloading the server. This is going to be the location where all our files are going to be hosted. All types of media will be hosted on the server, and it's going to be sent to all the clients that you have. It all needs to get the media from somewhere, and that's going to be our server. Uh, so we have the server selected over here. We have different operating systems over here. We're going to click on Windows. And we have an executable file that we're going to click on. We'll click on Download. And then you can see that we have the ARM version and AMD. Majority of the people will have an AMD uh, system set up. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then we have the executable file that we're going to download. We can see the version that we're using is 10.10.7. Click on that. Going to save that file into my downloads. Okay, it's done. I'm going to open it up now. And if you get a prompt like this, we're just going to say yes. And we're going to go through the installation. So we'll click on next. So there's a license agreement here that we have to accept if we want to continue. Now we have the basic install, which is recommended and install as a service. Now this is an advanced service. And if you want me to do this installation, just let me know in the comments below. We'll go ahead and do a basic install next. And now it's going to go ahead and install the files. I'm going to be using the default location for this installation. This is where all the data is going to be stored. I'm going to leave it as default and we're ready to install it. So we have the default locations already selected here and we're going to click on install. Okay, that installation is complete. And so you can see down here at the bottom, we have Jellyfin. I'm just going to double click it to open it up. All right, so I have this Windows Defender alert. Uh, it wants to go through my firewall, so we're going to allow access. All right, so now we have the setup guide. This is a quick setup guide. And what you have to do is just follow the prompts over here. Uh, so the default language is going to be English. So it wants to set up a user so you can set up your username here and password. This is the admin account. Uh, you might want to note this summer in case you forget it. We'll click on next. And this is where we're going to be setting up our libraries. So we want to click on add media and the content type. You can select the content type that you have over here. Uh, for an example, I'm going to select movies. The folder is going to be called movies. And now we want to actually add the folder that the movies are in. Okay, I'm just using the default Windows folder here. We'll click on OK. And now we have some library settings so we can enable the library. So you can select the language that you want the content to be downloaded. So I'll just select English and then your region. We'll just default to United States. And then you can prefer embedded titles over file names. So you can select this option if you want. Um, sure, why not? Uh, and then we also have to prefer titles over file names for extras. We can select that as well. These are just optional. You don't have to have them selected. And there is quite a few options over here where it's going to be gathering metadata for the movies that you are. And what I mean by metadata is the description of the movie, the actor's information, uh, other descriptions or other related information to those movies. It'll automatically be downloaded. And the sources that they have right now is the movie DB and the open movie database. So you can have these selected. You don't have to have them selected, but there are options in here. And then you can automatically refresh the metadata from the internet. This is optional. Uh, you can select periods of time, like every 30 days it'll check. Or you can say never. And then image fetchers. So if you like nice movie posters that go along with the movies, uh, there is a few databases that you can go ahead and select here and it'll automatically download those for you. If you're going to be downloading data, you can save it into the same media folder, which is a good option. And there's a few more tweaks in here that you can download chapter images. I, this might be a little bit much for me. Um, if you do want them, you can go ahead and select them. We'll just click on OK. And right now I have no movies in this folder, but that's my folder that's set. We can click on Next and then Preferred Languages. I'm going to leave these as default and then set up remote access. This is if you want people outside of your network to connect to it. I'm gonna disable that. I don't wanna allow remote action. Everything is gonna be happening locally on this PC, so I don't need remote access. These options can be changed later in the settings if you change your mind. Click on next, and we're all done. We can click on finish. Okay, so now we have the username that we can go ahead and type in here. 
and now I'm gonna sign in and here we go so now that we have this all set up we can go ahead and start copying movies into our video folder this is my video folder right over here anything that I put in this folder will automatically populate right over here and you'll be able to see all the movies and everything within this folder I'm gonna go ahead and copy one over all right so I ripped one of my DVDs which is Ocean's Eleven I'm just gonna copy it over right now so I copied over my movie it has the incorrect one this will sometimes happen and what we're gonna do is we're gonna update this to make sure it gets the right poster and information for the movie I'm gonna go over here into the more button and you go to identify and now we can search by name I'll just type in Ocean's Eleven I'll actually type in the word 11 and we'll search it and you can see we have a whole bunch of options so two of them are matching it I'm gonna go ahead and select the first one on here and now it's gonna replace the image as well as the information for this movie so we'll click on okay and there you go it's updated the information for this we can go ahead and click on it and all the information for this movie has now been populated in here all this information is automatically gonna show up on your devices when you choose to play this movie. So if you wanna change anything that we did during this installation, you can go up over here into the menu button and then you have settings and anything can be modified in the settings, whether it's gonna be your profile, playback, subtitles, controls, dashboards, metadata manager. It can all be updated right over here inside the settings. If you click on home, you, it brings you back to the main dashboard. So it's a fairly straightforward process to get the server set up. If you're looking for a client and you want to set this up on a phone or on a TV or on a PC, I'll make sure I include those videos down below in the description. So go ahead and check that out. If you thought this video was useful, please smash the like button. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.